The Rocky Mountains of North America, home to some of the most beautiful, pristine forests in the world. But the shades of burnt gold and reds aren't the changing tones of autumn. They're dead and dying trees. We're looking at tree mortality over a scale of tens of millions of hectares in the last decade alone. In fact, right across the globe, there are reports of trees dying in mass numbers. From Europe, from Africa, even right across the Amazon, and right here in Australia. Here, in the Perth Hills, trees have been dropping by the tens of thousands. Inside their carcasses are thriving parasites. So this is a larvae, a late instar larvae? Oh, he's alive and well. <laughs> These long-horned borers have been feasting on the live wood of Jarrah and Mary, the two dominant eucalypt species in southwest Western Australia. The insect is a native, and until recently, wasn't a problem. The numbers are scary. Where we might have seen one, maybe two per square metre, now we're seeing 50, 60, 70, 80. We've seen even as high as 100. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 larvae came off that one little spot. One, yeah, that one spot where the eggs were laid. And they get larger as they go away. What, because the larvae's actually grown in size yeah. as they've ploughed through the wood, huh? Yep. And this has had it. This is dead, yeah. But don't blame the borers. Unable to penetrate the moist wood of healthy trees, these insects are simply opportunists. We don't really know how it acts normally, but we suspect that it goes into dying and dead trees. Last summer provided an ideal feeding ground. This big eucalypt took hundreds of years to grow and died in just a couple of weeks. In fact, nearly every tree you see here died suddenly and at the same time. Last summer was the hottest, driest period on record and we had some 122 days with no rain. We had weeks with over 42 degrees and we started to see large areas just collapsing and dying. So we took an aeroplane up and it was amazing to see the extent of the yellowing and purpling and the numbers of trees that were dead. In the Perth Hills, we lost approximately 20,000 hectares of trees. Sadly, it's not just a one-off extreme event. Since the 1990s, Trees of many different species have been declining across southwest Western Australia. Along the highways, thousands of Mary trees are in blossom. They look healthy from a distance, but step a little closer and you'll find they are marked for death. Okay, so this is a very good example of a typical canker in Mary. Wow, that's a really sick tree, isn't it? Yes. The first things we look for is the red kynovein, the bleeding and the way the bark is lifting away off the main stem. The canker is the tree's reaction to a deadly fungus, which the eucalypt tries to wall off by surrounding it with a callus. Eventually, though, the pathogen wins. If a Mary gets a canker like that, does it mean it will definitely die? Yes, this tree is definitely going to die between now and three or four years' time. If you take a short walk along this highway, you see that Mary has a canker? That one has a canker, that one. In fact, most of the Mary trees here have cankers. That means that in 10 years or so, this whole place will be unrecognisable. The canker problem is probably the most severe thing that's happening in our forests at the moment. We've never seen it causing these levels of deaths, and now it is, so something has changed. Something has changed too for the Tuart trees. At Lake Clifton, south of Perth, their twisted skeletons rise through the peppermint groves. These ones died in the 1990s. In other areas, they are failing to fruit and the species' seed bank is drastically declining. Again, we don't fully understand what's driving these declines, but in some areas we're losing 100% of the trees. Despite many different ailments, there is one obvious common stressor that could explain why so many trees are dying. They are facing higher temperatures with less water. The southwest of Western Australia has lost 15% of its rainfall in the past few decades. 
average temperatures have increased by just over half a degree Celsius. Heat waves have become longer, more frequent and more intense. We haven't seen such scale of damage in the last 50, 60 years, probably in recorded history. These are some of, if not the toughest trees I've ever seen. Now we're seeing conditions that are going outside their ability to cope. US forest ecologist Dr Craig Allen sees the situation in WA as typical of the trends being observed elsewhere in the world. He's documented over a hundred examples of large-scale tree deaths in the past 25 years. We see all around the world in places where there have been droughts that drought, particularly droughts and heat waves, trigger mass waves of mortality. No major forest type is immune. Across the western US, tree death rates have more than doubled in the past few decades. Where I work in northern New Mexico, we see everything from grasses and shrubs to trees dying. Die-off events are quick and dramatic. There may be insects and fungal pests that emerge at that point in time, but underlying it is the physiological stress on the trees that compromises their defenses. You could think of it actually sort of like HIV in humans. HIV doesn't directly kill people, but by compromising our immune systems, it makes us vulnerable to secondary uh, you know, viruses and other things that can kill us. It's similar in trees. The effect climate change may have on our forests is a huge concern, but an even greater worry how will dying trees affect the climate? In 2005, the heart of the world's biggest rainforest suffered a drought so hot and severe, it turned the Amazon jungle from a carbon sink to a carbon source. A second, once in a century drought, happened five years later. So what we're seeing in these forest dive events around the world are trees passing the, the tipping point of stress, the thresholds, of mortality. Unfortunately, we don't know very much about these thresholds at this point. To better understand tree tipping points, Dr. Martin Bader is monitoring several major Western Australian species. This drought-stressed jarrah has instruments placed from the trunk to the outer leaves to measure how water is used across the tree. Okay, this is the canopy. This is where the tree loses most of its water because um, the leaves are fully exposed to the sun. Leaves lose water via tiny holes called stomata. These need to be open to draw in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. But if too much water is lost, the trees can shut down their stomata. We came out on a 40 degree day and did our measurements and realized that at shortly after nine o'clock, the tree basically shut down because at that time of the day, there was only a small opportunity where the tree could actually photosynthesize. And so it can't basically eat. The tree avoids dying of thirst, but then begins to starve. Martin had measurements on a banksia that died just a few months ago. Any time a day was over 30 degrees, the tree ran into pretty high stress levels. And then we had a couple of days consecutively over 30, 32 degrees, and there was just too much, apparently, that tipped the tree over. 60 to 70 percent of the banks cells died last summer. 60 to 70 percent in yeah. this woodland? Yeah. The she-oaks, apparently, last year we thought they died as well, but as you can see, they are all, or most of them they've are sprouting. Yeah, they've got re-sprouts. And so do the bank cells come back? No, the bank cells are, are all dead. They're, they're gone for good. Almost overnight, this banksia-dominated woodland has shifted to one with mainly she-oaks. The implications for nectar-loving birds, insects and mammals are profound. With climate change certain to intensify over the coming years, is there anything at all that can be done? There's good evidence trees can be protected with booster shots. This one's a fungicide. And the tree is transpiring and the chemical is taken up into the, into the sap flow. This little capsule contains nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and trace elements. All the nutrients a tree needs. Not very good with a mallet. Good luck. So 
Sometimes we see the response within six weeks. The leaves can change colour from a yellow to a nice, bright, healthy green. So, and it can save a tree like this. It can save a tree. Which looks like it's almost dead. dead. It could be a saviour for parks, gardens and golf courses. But ultimately, injecting all the trees in the world is just not an option. Eventually, climate will have the last say. What's most alarming is, is that these die-off events may be just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we know that warming temperatures exacerbate tree mortality, and the climate predictions are that the world is going to get much warmer soon. Um, so we may be just at the very front edge of what could be wholesale mortality of the world's forests, the forests that we know and care about today. <laughs>